Hello everyone, my name is Wei. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to show you my latest workflow for portrait retouching. Check out this before and after comparison. Not only did I add a liner, a shadow, and a lipstick to the woman in the photo, but I also made her skin smoother while keeping the texture very real. What's great is that her feature features remain untouched which is the true essence of AI retouching. You can find the link to this workflow in the description below the video. Before we import the workflow, we need to download a checkpoint. This is the core of the workflow, helping us apply makeup with AI. Sure, you could use Photoshop for this, but achieving realistic textures requires high skill and a lot of time. You can download the checkpoint from Hugging Face, and I'll include the link in the description. Once you're on the download page, make sure you're registered and logged into Hugging Face. As you can see, Cost Excel is developed by Stability AI, the same company behind Stable Diffusion. You'll need to provide some personal information before accessing the download page. After submitting your details, you can download the checkpoint. Once we have a checkpoint, we can import the workflow I designed. After importing it, you might notice some missing nodes. We can install them using Configure Manager. If you prefer, you can also install them manually. I'll provide the download link below. Now, let's dive into building this workflow. By the end of this tutorial, you understand its principles and how to use it effectively. First, Let's clean up the workflow. We'll start by adding a checkpoint loader. Select the cost Excel edit checkpoint we just downloaded. Next, add a self-attention guidance node. This helps Stable Diffusion use self-attention during each iteration of the image generation process, improving image quality by focusing on critical areas. If you prioritize image quality and can afford a bit more processing time, add this node. Set the scale value to less than one. Otherwise, the image will be very rough. Adjust the blur sigma to be larger than the scale to smooth out rough areas. Then connect these two nodes. Next, we'll import the image we want to edit. Add a load image node and upload your image. Our goal for the first round is to give her some gold eyeliner. Start by applying a mask to the eyeliner area. To make the edge transition smoother, add a max blur node and set the blur level to 2. To check the mask effect, Add a Convert Mask to Image node, then run ConfUI to see the generated mask. If the mask looks good, we are ready for the next step. Our workflow uses prompts to retouch the image. So let's add positive and negative prompts and change the colors to differentiate them. Enter the details of what we want to modify in the positive prompt. For the sampling method, choose Sampler Custom Advanced, but drag out other nodes one by one from this node's inputs to refine it. Start with Random Noise, which acts like the seed in other key samplers. Convert the Noise Seed widget to input to set the seed more freely. Then connect it to the seed node developed by RG3. Next, we drag out the dual CFG guider node. Set the positive CFG value above to 5. If it exceeds this, the resulting image might be distorted. For the negative CFG below, a range of 1.2 to 1.6 works well based on my tests. Since each uploaded image is different, feel free to experiment with other values if you encounter issues. Now, connect the model inputs. 
to ensure the prompt produces the retouching effect without altering other areas too much. Don't directly connect dual safety guider to the clip text encoders. Instead, insert an instruct pix to pix conditioning node between them. Connect this node to dual safety guider. Make sure the negative conditioning output of instruct pix to pix conditioning is connected to the second conditioning input of the dual safety guider to avoid issues with the output image. Also, Connect the negative prompt to the dual safety guider negative conditioning input. Then, connect the inputs of the instruct pix to pix conditioning as well. To tidy up the workflow, add a reroute node to change the route. Next, return to the sampler custom advanced node. Drag the key sampler select node from the sampler input. Based on my testing, sampling methods with the ancestral suffix work better. Then, drag the basic scheduler from the sigma's input and set the scheduler to exponential. Finally, it's time to add the VAE decoder and the image output nodes. To make it easier to observe the effect, add the image compare node. Connect the image A input to the image with the aligner drawn. And the image B input to the original image. Let me check the workflow. It looks like the two clips are not connected yet. All right, we have the basic workflow set up. Let's generate an image to see how it works. Oh. And I noticed the model input here isn't connected yet. Now the gold aligner is applied, but it's also affecting other areas. It seems the mask we drew isn't working. Because of the unique nature of the code's axial edit checkpoint, we can't use it to build an impend workflow. And we didn't make the mask work either. What should we do next? We can actually limit the eyeliner to the desired area using the mask. Let's add another node called Image Composite Masked. This node will help us perform an operation similar to masking in Photoshop. Connect the source to the image we just created, and connect the destination image to the image we uploaded at the beginning. This is like putting the original image on a top layer and the destination image on the bottom layer in Photoshop, and then using masking to limit the changes to the desired area. After adding this node, we include an image compare node. Then generate the image. This time, we've successfully applied the eyeliner to the specified area. Next, let's apply some eyeshadow. First, make a copy of the current image. Go back to the load image node at the beginning and paste the copied image. We'll create a mask for the eyeshadow and set the max blur a bit higher for a smoother transition. Update the prompt with the details for the eyeshadow. Adjust the CFG of dual CFG guider to a smaller value and then generate the new image. Great! The eyeshadow effect is now applied. When it comes to portrait retouching, there's a crucial step we can't ignore, smoothing the skin. However, simply using a prompt like smooth skin with cause axial edit might produce problematic results. Also, 
Creating a mask for facial skin manually can be quite a hassle. Even though Photoshop extensions can do it automatically, manually applying it would be too cumbersome. Luckily, Comfy UI has a special note for face masking called Face Parts. Let's add it in. I'll place it below our basic workflow, as we'll start building the advanced workflow here. Face Parts needs a model, so let's drag it out from the model input along with the preprocessor. Face Parts can only mask the face, so we need to connect the image input to the face image. We'll add another node called Image Crop with B box, which crops the image using a bounding box. This B box recognizes the facial region and crops it out with a rectangular box. The B box input here needs to be connected to another node called B box List Item Select, which selects the bounding box. If there's only one person in the picture, the index value defaults to zero. Then, Drag face B box detect from the B box list input. This node controls the threshold value and size of the bounding box, with the upper parameter controlling the threshold and the lower one controlling the size. The B box detector inputs needs a model that detects faces with a bounding box. We can choose a smaller model like the nano version to avoid consuming too many resources. Let's rearrange the nodes as there are many more to be connected on the right side. Connect a preview image node to face parts and another preview image node to image crop with B box. Then run this workflow to see the facial processing result. Oops. There's an error because the two image inputs aren't connected. Let's connect them to the image we just processed. Now it works fine. Look at this colorful facial segmentation image. It shows that Face parts has segmented all the regions of the face, and the image crop with B box has cropped out the face. However, we only need the skin part, so let's add more nodes. Drag another face parsing results parser from face parts. Here we can set a lot of parameters. We only need the skin of the face, so turn on skin. The nose in this image is in the highlight area and doesn't have much detail. So we'll keep the nose switch and other switches off to smooth the edges of the skin mask. Add a girl mask with blur node. And set the expansion size and the blur readers. Add two more nodes to preview the effect of the mask. Let's run the workflow to see what the mask looks like. OK, but done with the skin mask. The next step is to make the skin smoother while maintaining its texture. Let's add another in-paint workflow. For the checkpoint, we'll choose the lighting version of Dream Shaper XL. It's not only faster, but also provides excellent skin texture. I'll include the download link below. There's also a lighting version with Juggernaut XL, which is very good but I find Stream Shaper's skin texture slightly better. We are at the prompt Smooth Skin and set the case sampler. Since we are using the lighting version of the checkpoint, we can set it to just the three sampling steps. It's incredibly fast. For CFG, set it to two. For the sampling method and the scheduler, follow the checkpoint author's recommended settings. Set the denoising strength to 0.4. Next, we need to connect everything. To impend, we need to encode the impended image with V and set the latent noise mask.
connect all the nodes. And finally, add two more nodes to output the image. Let's generate the image. Wow, the skin looks much smoother, making her look about 10 years younger. This workflow is almost perfect, but we can refine it a bit more. For example, let's change the color of her lips or apply lipstick. The current workflow isn't ideal for this, since lips are a small area and harder to control. We need a more efficient method. Add a color adjust node. This is similar to Photoshop. You can change the contrast, brightness, saturation, and the hue of the image. Here, you adjust the hue. Add a preview image node to see the effect. The lip color changes, and the whole face changes too. We need to limit the adjustment to just the lips, like we did earlier with the face mask. Copy the four nodes from earlier. And for the mask area, select the upper and lower lips. Connect them. and reduce the mask size and the blur since the lips are a smaller area. Generate another image. The lip mask is done. Next, add an image composite mask node, similar to the previous workflow. Great, the lips are done. Now, there's one final step. This trimmed image is the cropped face area, so we need to place it back onto the original image. Let's add another super powerful node, image insert with B-Box. This will do the trick. Connect the B-Box input to the previous node, B-Box list item select. Connect the image source to the uncropped image. Then, connect the image input to the image we just processed. Finally, add an image compare node to review the final result. Now, the workflow is complete. The entire workflow is divided into two parts. The upper part Use it cos Excel to apply makeup to the woman. Since the makeup process might need to be repeated several times, it's best to temporarily freeze the lower part while running the upper workflow. Let's group the workflow below and add a switch node to toggle this group on and off. This way, it's easier to apply makeup to the woman first. Once you are satisfied with the result, you can turn on the lower group to refine the facial details. Alright, that's all for this video. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any suggestions for this workflow. If you find it useful, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video.